under, I understand by this term of artistic techniques or technologies or cultural techniques. Those parts of art which can be articulated in our mother tongue, mother tongue, then in mathematical terms, equations or something like that. And finally, which can be formalized in the sense of computer science and software engineering, and therefore, under postmodern conditions, under computational conditions, techniques, artistic techniques, which can be transmitted without teachers' interference. That is, without university. This is one side of the problem I, I want heartily to address. The other and contradictory part of the argument is that the historical fact, which is the name of my chair, history of media instead of just theory of media, which doesn't make sense in, in my ears, um, that also everything nowadays is almost able and capable to be formalized and programmed, nevertheless, the history of itself of this way from art to technology, in my mind, cannot be formalized. This, is, this was a contingent history with no predictable teleologic end. There's no, there no telos in history, as Hegel would have it. There is no final last stage of history which has been guaranteed by God or something else, somebody else from the very beginning. History is not compelled to mean us from paradise to apocalypses and Jerusalem. History is free and open. And that's why I, instead of following the Christian model of history, prefer the open history proposed by Martin Heidegger in Freiburg Breisgau, where I studied. There are, some, there are epochs of being, starting with the Greeks, not with the Chinese or the Indians, but with the Greek, and changing the sense, the very sense of being and making, which in Greek means poetry, under unpredictable reasons or conditions, which is to say that we can tell the past which has happened in the history of being, but that we are unable to predict anything for the future. We are open for the worst case and for the best case, for the eternal absence of God and for their return. We are open. But that, that's why I articulated, divided this written text and its oral performance this evening into three chapters. The first chapter, number one, concerns the, the ancient Greeks who conceived being as physics, as nature. The second part, I skipped the Roman history, I skipped the, I skipped the medieval history almost. So it, there are missing parts in this argument. My editors wouldn't like, wouldn't have liked to go into medieval detail. The second part starts in about 1400 and is under title "Being as Representation," as subjective representation of, of the world in in some subject, sub, sub, some subject, some general subject represents to him or herself the world as an outer, as an inner representation of the outer world, as in Descartes or John Locke's incredibly dull acid on human understanding. The, en the entry of commercialism into philosophy, John Locke. And the third part is under title, Being as Technology, and this regards our very time and lifetime. Third. 
developed art and technique, just as every other world which gives to think and to research in sciences is a gift given to us by the Greeks. The decisive fact, linguistic fact, is that in opposition to our use of the words techne and art in Old Greek, Ancient Greek, techne meant both art and technology and handicrafts and science. Whereas under modern conditions, arts are one thing and technology is one other thing. And media are the bridge between media, technical media, communication media are the bridge between arts and sciences. Arts and arts and technologies. Otherwise said, to say it otherwise. The dark side of the moon is would be science, modern technology and science. And the title of a, of a, of a long disc made by Roger Waters and Pink Floyd, The Dark Side of the Moon. And this would be science and technology, and nobody in this room, except some very exceptional people, has any idea about what happens behind our, our, our end users' minds. But media would be the visible part of the moon. <coughs> Therefore, in, in ancient Greek, techne, which, has, which is related to timbering in its etymological root, carpentry, mm, has, an, has an internal semantic range from high poetry over brilliant architects and artists down to, down to simple handicraft and even to black magic, as it's techne, kako techne, this one word for black magic and, and shia, and shia fraud in Heraclite, in Heraclite, in Heraclite, Heraclite episode. The second point for this Greek founding of our thought and of our thought, the second seem have to be the first people among all these far not near east and far and far eastern European uh, people to think about where they did come from arts and technai technical skills. So for instance to take the first and only vowel alphabet, the Greeks asked who had invented these five vowels. And they had some names, some mythical names, as possible candidates for the introduction of five vowels into a pre-given, consonantical, only consonantical, northern Syrian alphabet. There, there was mythical Cadmus, the founder of Sibi. There was Palamedes from the island of Eubea. Of, of there was Promethos, you, you, you all know, as the... As the Captor of fire and letters and the alphabet in Isios. No, none of these mythical heroes is really the author of this innovation of the five vowels, but certainly the alphabet itself as an innovation is led and lays the very basis for every poetry and science and philosophy which ever take which which ever take took place and takes place in so called Western <coughs> culture. And there were not only main mythical or factical men who invented, but the goddess Athene invented weaving and what the goddess Aphrodite invented you everybody knows. There, would be, there can be no law without Aphrodite's help. She makes love and beloved beautifully, more beautiful than before. Okay.
That is why techne in the old Greek sense encompasses every activity which in contrast to nature, to physics, grows not by itself. You have to distinguish in Greek praxis and poesis. Praxis is just the way we move around in an ethical way, in a polis, in a state, and so on, without, without any work as a result of this praxis. And physics would be the reason why flowers bloom and animals mate and disappear and die. And poiesis or techne would be the way we produce things that have not been before. In this way, techne imitates physics. Art imitates nature. And this is called mimesis in the Greek sense. This mimesis of nature done by poetry, by techne, can range from the highest to the lowest form. It can consist in making up a glass in order to drink. It can consist in making a gods or a goddess's statue in marble or in bronze, and then it is a making considerate, considerable enough to be honored by memorizing the name of the man who did this work. And in, in any case, it's opposed to the most important to praxis and poiesis Main, that is, women in Maine can do, they can make children. This would be not techno for year, for a year, but techno for year, the making of children. <coughs> Since 1800, after Christ, <coughs> te <coughs> technology is the goal and the dream of every modern national or global state, and in Greece, uh, the most fundamental condition of survival was technopoeia, the making of children. This is the first line of the first, um, first commentary of Xenophon on the polis of Sparta. After all these wonderful things came Athenian philosophy and formalized it, throwing out music and numbers from this Greek beginning. And it was especially, above all, Aristotle pupil of Plato, founder of the Lycaon, who formalized all this stuff about myths and making children making and so on. And, he, and, and, and it was his treatise on physics and on metaphysics which put the ongoing and unending theoretical scape or scheme which we, which we follow in every second sentence without knowing and reading Aristotle of Stegeira. His he defined mistakenly everything in the world, everything, every flower, every <coughs> body, every, every star and what, what, what else you have. He defined everything <coughs> starting from techne instead of physics. And so stars are made by somebody and flowers are in a sense produced and as are as as, as vases and statues and and technical things are produced. And, the, and therefore since Ar since Aristotle's or by Aristotle's measure, man everything has four and only four reasons to be to have come into existence either for some years or minutes or for it take eternity. And amongst these four 
origins or reasons or principles of everything that is, the third reason in Aristotle's saying is unimportant. This is the maker. Whether he's famous like Praxiteles or infamous or unknown like some waste or waste maker, that's not it. The, 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 the name of the maker and the function of the maker is the most, the, the less, the less least, least important part of the thing. Much more important is the matter. You take glass in order to make a glass. You, make, you take wood in order to make a ship. You take marble in order to make a statue. This is important for the statue. But much more important for the statue than the marble would be the idea, the, the morphe, the form the gods and the goddesses have presented to mankind since immoral time in their, in their pictorial and oral and written down tradition. And if the sculptor or painter is able to get this form Apollon has since 300 years, or Aphrodite has since 500 years. When this form is well implemented in this body of marble or bronze, it's almost okay, but the fourth and, more, and, and, and most important reason to be for things is why they are, to do which function in the future. And that's different from the form. Form, just the form is, a, is an intemporal in, definition of lines and figures and so on. But what shall this statue do in the future if I make it, if I'm, if I'm an artist? And so the goal of a statue is to be put inside a temple, a god's house, and to be honored by the polis of Sparta. And this conjunction of all four reasons, principles, by TI, as I would call an energia, which is the very origin, and it was a newly coined word, energia, and it's translated in the 19th century by energy, electrical energy, what, what nuclear energy, you can look around. stated, Greeks would say that there is a technical step. Gone. Arrived. Happened. In the case of everyday work, craft, craftsmen, but now they will do the work. But the, you know, the, the fundamental innovations of their own history, the Greeks couldn't get theoretically at. They realized that they had the first and only vowel alphabet, I, t I told you. They didn't realize that they changed the functions of the alphabet twice in their history from phonetical values, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, and so on. They changed the value to alpha equals one, beta equals two, gamma equals three, and so on and so on, up to 999. And uh, this was done in minus 570, and slightly later, in order to produce tragedy and, and, and choir song, they gave every le each letter in the alphabet a, 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 a musical third connotation, high or low, and the whole octave was organized in alphabetic value. <coughs> And from that, from that, and after having done this, organized all cultural techniques by one and only one alphabet, they, in the fourth century, that is much later, 
they realize that the whole of the universe can be conceived as an alphabet, as, an, as, a, as a combination of, of, of elements, because the, Greek, the second word for Greek letters was not takramata anymore, but stokaya, the things in order, from A, to, from Aleph, from Alpha to Omega. And then the Empedocles realized that if you have got an alphabet which for the first time in history articulates every spoken sound and every mouth, then we can conceive of physics, of the, of the cosmos, of the universe as such, as composed of four elements. The splendor of heaven, otherwise Zeus, and the darkness of earth, otherwise Hera, and the fire from beneath, otherwise Hades and Etna and all Vulcano in the world, and the, and, the, and the gift of drinkable water, otherwise Koreo, the dead gods. Got him. Wife. 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 Thank you. And, and these four elements and no other element holds together, hold, hold together by Aphrodite, constitute this universe. And the same holds true for, for numbers and for the idea of harmony in music and everywhere else. The, the mathematical relation of the octave is a string. You have a guitar, Greek guitar, in English a guitar, in, 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 in Hindu a sitar, which is always the same Greek word, guitar, written in, in, in Indian or in English or in Spanish. And this is a string, and if you Divide the string into two equal parts, you get not the sub, not, not the not the fundamental tone, but the octave. And so the relation of the octave is two to one. And if you further make, make further divisions on the guitar, on the guitar, on the sitar, on everything Jimi Hendrix used to play, you get this fundamental relation. For this, this would be the, the this would be the force times, <coughs> this would be the fifths equals that is the fifths times the fourth co comes back to the octave. This is the whole mathematical or arithmetical secret of all music till the end of time. Because the octave is perceived by our, by our ears not as a different tone from the fundamental tone, but as a, but as a recursion, the coming back on the same tone. So we can say that the guitar, the guitar has given Europe the first epistemic thing to, epistemic I mean a thing, which implements mathematical relations to everybody's ears. A child can be demonstrated that an, an ill-toned guitar doesn't give a good sound, and a well-toned guitar is okay. All Greek speculation on planets and astronomy and atoms have proven false. This is the only true statement of Greek mathematics. And no, on, 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 Greek, on Greek applied mathematics. There are many other theorems of pure mathematics that still hold on, on prime numbers and so on and so on. And, 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 and it was the trouble of Greek philosophy after Plato and Aristotle to throw out numbers and mathematics from thought and philosophy and just preferring discourses and discourse discursive events and talking and playing around and postmodernity and la différence. Qu'est-ce que vous avez? <laughs> a 
And so, being as beautiful being and musical being disappeared since Plato. Plato took music out of our ears on, on, on out from these earth and put music in the, into the celestial spheres. Everybody knows about celestial harmonies. They can't exist, they will exist, they won't exist, but they were believed from Platonists to, to Cicero, Cicero, to Macropius, every Christian bishop agreed because Christian bishops didn't like music on in our, in our mouths and ears, they preferred celestial harmonies. And only in the late, in the late Middle Ages, Roger Bacon dared say there are no celestial harmonies. Every music takes place in time and space and here on, on the physical conditions. And so I skipped this silly story. And I go to, to the second part, just in time. <coughs> As if I would be Volkswagen Corporation, being as representation. It is true, mathematics, arithmetic, as well as geometry, as well as purely theoretical music without instruments and voices, were, were given from generation to generation of monks and nuns and professors and teachers. To, the Greek knowledge didn't die. The Greek knowledge just was never applied anymore. And only the troubadours and the singers and in the high middle ages tried somehow to recover their body and mind from Christian and other terrorisms. Muslim terrorism, for instance, and not to forget the third one. And so architecture and mechanics were, were given from generation to generation and, get, and produced cathedrals and so on. And it, wasn't, it wasn't a lost time. No time is lost in the history of being. Every time had, has its honor and its glory and its sadness. But music was a free science since the Pythagorean theorem I wrote on this whiteboard. Painting and sculpture were not regarded as anymore as, as free as free arts. They were considered as dull, handicapped, and this was sc scandal on to some early Renaissance main a teacher and a pupil. The teacher was great uh, artisan coming out from goldsmith, uh, from a goldsmith guild, and the, and the pupil was from noble descent, but illegal. He was a bastard and not a um, matrimonial child, and he had these problems with his father and this unnoble prostitute as a mother. And the first one was named Filippo Brunelleschi, and the second one was named Gian Battista Alberti, and he switched to the new name, Leon Battista Alberti, the, Alberti the Lion. And Brunelleschi, before he perfected the cupola on uh, the cathedral Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence, uh, tried to become famous not as a traditional painter and sculptor, but as a mathematician, and he disappeared for 10 years into private mathematical school, and then he came out in, 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 in 1420 about. He had a new concept of painting, a revolution and a new concept of painting. Painting should represent a subject's representation of the world. Can you imagine? I. This is my place at this very moment. This is Mr. Speck's place. This is your place. Everybody of us sees the world from another angel in this room. We are positioned as subjects in this room by angles and distances. And to make a long short, short story short, by geometrical relations. We are also determined by 
for tonal relations, but this would be a question of CERN in Geneva and not with uh, this Brunelleschi and Alberti. And so Alberti probably <coughs> mm, put a little, Alberti positioned himself in the main portal of Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence, cathedral, and he, and, and this is the portal, this is Alberti's body, and this is the baptistry of Florence, an octagonal structure that every young child, child in Florence ha ha had been baptized. San Giovanni. And this open portal, Brunelleschi, uh, for taking, for that, was hiding with a with dark uh, stuff. Some of the text. Some text. And he made only one little hole. Uh, hole. And behind himself, he positioned uh, an empty an empty paintings, a paint, painter's ground. And then some sun and, and, and her rays uh, touched the surfaces of San Giovanni. And San Giovanni reflected the sun's light and only those rays which passed this hole could and use themselves on the, as light on the, in this dark little space Albert, uh, Brunelleschi had constructed himself. And Alberti was facing this, this image, this camera obscura image of, 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 of San Giovanni and not San Giovanni. And then, it's a long story and I make it short, this was the first perspective tableau <coughs> painting in the history of painting. And Alberti generalized this uh, practical approach to linear perspective by <coughs> applying geometrical and Euclidean laws uh, to make not only uh, paintings from existing architecture, but also to make paintings from imaginary future architecture or, so, or environments. In order to paint uh, Jesus Christ, you couldn't, you couldn't believe your eyes, you had to make up perspective landscapes and buildings because nobody saw it. And so painting uh, ceased to be a ars mechanica, a mechanical art, and turned following the medieval model of music into a free art, an art where geniuses and Famous names were for the first time allowed. We don't know who painted when, some medieval icon, for instance. And the same holds true for music. Simon Staving, Staving who was a military counselor of Moritz von Oran, <coughs> did the same <coughs> mathematization, algebraization which Alberti had done for painting, and from this very time, that is for structurally from the end of the 16th century on, music and painting, the two romantic arts, as Hegel would have to call them, became free from Greek pre predefined physics and poets and, and technique, they became modern, modern forms organized by orchestras instead of singing voices and just one solo guitar. Orchestras and symphonies became <coughs> possible thanks to Simon Staving, Staving's real number system introduced. He introduced the real number system. He said every half tone before, before Simon Stavin, every half tone deferred from another half tone, given the Pythagorean natural definition of musical interval. And Simon Stavin, inventing pure tuning, said any half, half tone from C to C 
sharp, from C sharp to D, from D to D sharp, from D sharp to E, from E to F, from F to F sharp, from F to from F sharp to G, and so on and so on, is defined mathematically to be higher than its predecessor by this irrational quantity, the twelfth root out of two. Every, every man and woman building a modern synthesizer, as I did for five years, knows by heart that the twelfth root out of two is, is a tiny amount, but approximately And this is so hungry, and this was so revolutionary for painting. Thank you. And as it was for, you know, for, for musicians and building of, 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 of keyboards and pianos and, and all these things. And the only art that resisted any mathematization and algorithmization as you may imagine, may have imagined since 15 minutes, has a simple name. It's poetry. No effort has been done before Max Bender and his crazy fellows to formalize what we do every day when we say a poem by heart. We can approach the outer side of poetry by making theater representations, representations for a subject, more subjectively acceptable. Since the French Revolution at the end of the 18th century, theater as an outer form of poetry was not regarded any longer as something that should be conceived and viewed from just one viewpoint, namely the viewpoint of the reigning king, but in a democratic theater, every place, even the worst place in the paradise at the end of, the, of La Salle in Paris, uh, should have some access to the acoustical and optical data taking place on the stage. And, that, and, and the great chemist, La Voisie, uh, developed a new form of, of, of pre-electric illumination for theater purposes. And uh, other, other people try to conceive the, the linear perspective formerly only applied to three-dimensional paintings, to the, to the two-dimensional paintings, to the three-dimensional perception of the stage for everybody in this room, in this audience. And, <clears throat> and composers like Debussy in Paris and Wagner in Wagner near Lucerne and Wagner in Munich and Wagner in Bayreuth and Wagner <coughs> on his exile, in his, during his exile and Wagner during his triumphs, they did everything to combine this optical illusion given by a perspective and all its tricks and imagination. On the one hand, to the musical illusion on the other hand. And that's why they forgot about Mozart and Beethoven, all this silly stuff, mostly composed for string instruments leaving open the role of brass and wood. And Debussy and following Wagner conceived of a big orchestra in which, like in a modern military division, brass and wood and string would be an acoustic continuum covering every conceivable sound your ears ha has, have heard before or not. So they could play thunderstorms and idyllic landscapes, work 
music, like the Nibelungs, or incestuous erotic fulfillment, as in the middle part of Valkyrie, the Valkyrie, or the Twilight of the Gods at the end of the Ring, is an is an is a is a acoustically as well as optically composed end of the world. You really see the gods disappear, you hear them disappear, you hear the river Rhine come back and take its gold, uh, take, 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 take back its gold, and the last words is to the silence, the three wine daughters. And then everybody, everything ends in an unending orchestra culmination. And this was reason now for all the fascinated engineers at the end of the 19th century to take over this crazy stuff. Or the, not only the Enders, who got us for the knows better than me. In the first, in the first second, the principle of Alberti and Brunelleschi's principle of the camera obscura was taken over by the camera, by the photographic camera. Okay. Humans, the, the eye of human representation of the world was substituted, replaced by the eye of an automatic camera and film and movie and, 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 and sound film all took everything out of Bayreuth. In Bayreuth, for the first time in the history of theater, before the show began, it was, it was sheer darkness in the audience. And, and then the light came on from dark to brightness in a continuous amplification of light and the gods, the represented gods of the ring appeared, Wotan and so on, and, and, every, and every movie theater in the world has to, taken over by Roy. It's not, it's not, it's not worth our, 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 it's not worth our time to, to insist on this fact that the early history of technical illusion mass media is the takeover of engineers over these crazy 19th century <coughs> geniuses. And no, no Greek poet or sculptor would have been called poet, uh, genius. Genius is a Renaissance concept amplified by English capitalism. And, and, and as everybody knows, and I, now I'm forgetting my typo script, mm, modern art is a, is a mistaken answer to the problem of photography and movie and, and phonography and all this mass media stuff. Instead of following the engineering light of the days 100 years before, they decided to rebel from, from Duchamp, the brilliant Duchamp, to the blatantly stupid Andy Warhol. <laughs> and that's why we are looking, I, I'm looking for Johannes de Meer van Delft and modern art, especially optical art, for me is, a, is, 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 a, is, is simply a misbehaving, which seems to end thanks to computers. <laughs> Before our very eyes. Why should you? Why should you ever pay dollars for entering the MoMA? I see no reason. Except the design part in the yeah. highest floor. Jaguars and brown design but will stay a longer time than because of And since Alan Turing's genial theorem that not every real number can be represented by an account of the sub subset of the real numbers, said, but some most, most practically important real numbers can be represented in a finite way by their equation, namely, we, we can produce an infinite sum formula for E or for P, pi, and we can do many things. Since then, all this 
this real, this immense flow of modern media in, in their analogous claimer can be reduced to the two numbers, zero and one. And all algorithmic, and, 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 and we can dig, dig digitalize paintings and movies and symphonies and pop songs and the weather from yesterday and tomorrow and tsunamis and what else. And I don't, and now I come back to my written German text in order not to improvise anymore. <laughs> we can say that under the, under the given binary conditions, the universality of the Greek writing system, which at the same time denoted sounds and mathematical entities and musical entities, has been, been regained by one and zero. That is tantamount to say that everything which is beautiful can be encoded and nothing that is much too ugly can be. Everything can, can be encoded, encoded but it doesn't make sense to <laughs> let's say to encode for eternity the architecture of this in, in the room. <laughs> this is just improvisation. Shall perish with our generation. <laughs> Therefore, there are no artworks anymore whose aesthetic values and structures could not be simulated by logical and mathematical operations, i.e. by algorithm, who, which by definition come in finite time and finite space to an end and to a success. I wouldn't say that last paintings of Johannes Daniel van Delft can be uh, simulated one to one, but let's say 80%. <laughs> and it, it is much more, and, and still more important, perspe perspective in drawing and three-dimensional perspective animation are, not, are nowadays not just element uh, given us by expensive and body software, as we, we had, this was a situation in the 80s and 90s, but now our graphic engi engines being better than our CPUs, our central processor units, NVIDIA and, a a and, and ATI are the only surviving graphical engine producers. Um, all this pers perspective and isotropic and unisotropic and reflective and and, and, and refractive, reflexive and refractive stuff, all is written down in hardware. And you can see every, every, every Sony game box is, or, the, or, or Microsoft is, is a representation of the world, which doesn't need our representation anymore. The time of the job subject has gone. And we live in Heidegger's technique, which is unmistakable unmistakably different from René Descartes and uh, Leon Bassist Alberti. <coughs> and the same holds true for music. You can play without, you just need an, an audio engine and the output of your computer and you can tune your image, your virtual guitar, guitar in Pythagorean pureness or in Simon Stevian, impureness, you can do everything and you don't do it often enough. <laughs> and there's this otherwise not so important internet which delivers or frees every work that has been done in the history of Europe and not Western culture in digital form without memorizing the author anymore. <coughs> Whether this is good or bad, it's up to us to, to decide every day, every night. I hope. <laughs>
I, my option would be for free software and no copyright at all. Much better than copyright is your patient to listen. Thanks for this.